Jake Butt, Denard Robinson. Just a couple Michigan men walking around on campus, catching up on old times and Yo. excited to talk to you, man, because do you need any introduction? Probably not, <laughs> right? Probably not. But you had quite the career here, now back on campus, interesting post-college career as well. But I kind of wanted to ask you just to start at some point. Do you remember why you chose Michigan? Because you're down in Florida, right? <laughs> Yeah, that yeah. the cold scares a lot of people away. Oh, Do you remember when you first said, "Okay, I want to be a Michigan Wolverine"? So, to be honest with you, I t made made sure Rich Rodriguez made my official visit on a snow day. He made so, that. Yeah, I said, "Hey, I want to see snow for the first time." You want to see it at the worst? Yes. Okay. So I told him, "I'm like, hey, I'm going to make sure we get a little snow, have a little snowball fight." And uh, that's what we did. We went to the big house. Okay. Coach got us in the big house, and uh, he was like, "All right." Snowball fight. The first coach threw, I think Coach McGee threw the first snowball. Boom, hit somebody. Okay. And it just took off from there. Everybody that was on that recruiting visit started throwing snowballs. So you had a great time then? Oh, yeah, definitely. And you look, you weren't too cold. Did you have a nice winter jacket at that point? Did I, you, you wouldn't have had a winter all, jacket. I didn't own a winter jacket. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what happened? So Double hoodies? No. The first day first, they gave us a jacket. I had one hoodie on, and I had my varsity jacket on. And they gave me a bigger j jacket, obviously. Uh, I didn't have any gloves. So I went in a snowball fight with no gloves. Okay. And when I say I left there and I was like, my hands are burning. And guess what the first thing I did? Put it in hot water. Okay. And everybody and told it, me I was the wrong thing. It's dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I figured, you know, if you can do that, you, you, you check that box. You said, all right, if I can do a snowball fight, that's fun. I can embrace it a little bit. I can do anything. Right. How soon after that did you commit? Or was that, had you already committed because it was your official visit? Uh, no, I didn't commit then. I, okay. cause it was it was a, it was a battle between Florida and Michigan, mm -hmm. and so Urban did a great job recruiting me. I'm not gonna lie to you, he did wow. a great job recruiting. Me. And uh, I was I was out of Florida here, and uh, it came down to it. And my mom loved it here. Uh, actually, one of my teammates supposed to came here. His name is Adrian Woody, and so he, him and him, him and my, him and me, we came came up here on the, on the official visit together. We was in the hotel sitting there, and I'm like, bro, there's no place like this. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm like, it's no place like this. Now we went in the big halls, wow. we seen it, we felt it, and I'm like, yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. And so the rest is history. I don't think you guys understand how rare it is to have a Florida guy, a Florida boy, right? They yes. call it Florida, yeah, Florida, Florida, Florida boys. Florida boys. Florida boys. <laughs> Having Urban Meyer recruiting you to Florida, and you come up on your official visit during a snowstorm with the snowball fight and say, yeah, I want to play there. That is just completely rare, huh? Oh, it was, it was definitely rare. Everybody looked at me like I was crazy. I mean, guys from back home, they was like, what are you doing? Why not go to Florida State? Why not go to Miami? Why yeah. not go to Florida? You know, and I was just like, man, when I got there, I felt, felt the love from Rich Rod. I felt the love from Coach Gibby, uh, Coach Rod Smith, Rich Rodriguez, mm -hmm. and, and Coach uh, – Coach Mid, I mean, it, Coach, they, they they did it for me. They yeah. made they made sure everything was good for me, and I and I felt like home. My mom loved it. Coach Jay, I forgot to say, Coach Federico. Okay. I call him Federico. Everybody, his name is Fred Jackson. Freddie J. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Freddie J. Who's also back with the program yes, now? Yes. So it's great to see him around, and I mean, we have conversations. We talk about the time that he actually sat in my grandma's house. Yeah. And we had a conversation about me coming. So you're just a rare dude in general, though. Somewhat. <laughs> Okay, but I do want to circle back because you, the the rarity, uh -huh. you're a rare dude in general. All right. Where did that start? I mean, to to be a Florida boy and to come up to Michigan, that's different. Uh, you have to be a different person to embrace that. Yeah, I mean, shoot, I grew up with five brothers, one sister. Yeah. I mean, that's already rare already, and so I'm the second the youngest. So you you already going against the grain already when you, when all everybody beating you and everything mm -hmm. you know so I'm the second the youngest the only person I can beat is my little brother mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a little different you you treat it a little different you act a little different and you approach everything with so much aggression and so ready to go like and compete yeah and so like me coming up here I, like everybody was like Michigan is down right now I'm like I don't care if they down or not because I'm gonna be the guy to bring it up yeah that was my mindset my mindset was like I don't care where 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 it's at I'm gonna be be a part of the championship team I'm gonna win one. So that's, that's my other curiosity because it's funny. I think about my own career when I get on campus and I had no idea what to expect. I had dreams and I had goals mm -hmm. and aspirations. What was your thoughts when you came on campus? Did you have any idea how your career was going to unfold? I had no clue, no clue. I, all I know, I, I was going to win. So I, I don't care about like the stats. Like people always ask me about stats and I was like, I don't, I don't know it. 
because I don't care about it. I don't care about the W and L's. Mm -hmm. And more, sometimes it's crazy because I tell people all the time I hate losing more than I like winning. And if you watch anybody that compete and like that compete at a high level, that's the feeling they have. I'm pretty sure you feel the same yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Like you hate losing more than you like winning. It's it's about the pain, right? Yes. Like the joy, the joy is great, and, and it's n it's not to take anything away from it. Mm -hmm. But there's a there's a, a a negativity aspect. The pain is so painful. Yes. That you're motivated more to never feel that again than you are to say you almost you you you, you get to the point where you expect winning yes you, you get numb to it it's like hey this is the standard but the pain is so painful that's where you find the motivation yes i, so I tell people all the time about the the spirits i had in high school so it was the game before state championship my no western was the number one team in the country and we go against them we up the whole game we beat them we take it to them and it comes a minute and 30 seconds left. We're on the one yard line. We try to go push to the end. I, me and my coach come up with a play. He's like, hey, let's do a, let's do a quarterback sneak first. And the next play, we're going to do a rollout. But we didn't know that the down market was on third. It was on third down, and they was going to flip it by the time I got the play. So, you know, back in high school, you used to run to the sideline, get in the play, and come back in. Yeah. So I go, go to the sideline, get in the play, and come back in. And uh, they, miss, they switched the down market, and we already take it, we already take it to go. We go, we go in, try to quarterback sneak, they stop it. Guess what happened? They go 99 yards and win the game and they go to the state championship and win it. Never forget that feeling ever. That's, it still brings tears to my eyes sometimes when I talk about it. So the pain of losing. Losing, and that's what I'm saying. It, it, it drove me to be who I am today. Yeah. Like I, I was like, I would never feel that feeling again. Yeah. And that's why I tell people all the time, like if I ever got the ball at the end of the game, I'm pretty sure I feel like I'm gonna win the game. No matter what, how much time left on the clock, I'm gonna try to win that game. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I always been. So that that leads me to because I think what gets forgotten, and you correct me if I'm wrong on any of these details here, but it was the Ohio State game, right? Mm -hmm. You come out of half. I remember you 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 you're running right through the heart of a, the Buckeye defense. Two dudes come and hit you, bounce right off <laughs> you. You go score. But then there was the funny bone injury, the nerve injury. Mm -hmm. Was that in the Ohio State game? That was in the Nebraska game. Okay. And so that is So funny. you played the Ohio State game with that head on? With that arm, yes, yep. Yes. With my hand messed up. My hand was messed up, but I told Coach, I said, I want to play, man. Mm -hmm. Strap me in. Whatever I could do to help the team, let's go. And so it was funny because, like, that play was, like, supposed to be, like, one of those plays, like, all right, let's, let's try to bust a big run and see what happens, and we'll try to we'll, – we'll, we'll spark, let's spark this drive to see if we want to keep going for it or we just going to take a knee to yeah. go into the halftime. Yeah. And coach was like, all right, we'll call this play. And it was one of the ones I'm like, if I get this ball, I'm taking it. Yeah. And so in my mind, I was like, I'm taking it to the crib. And it, it happened like that. I was like, man. And everybody come up to me to this day and was like, how did you run through two dudes like that? Yep. And I was like, man, that was God. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the willpower, right? It's that internal voice, that internal dialogue. Um, can you just talk like I think fans love to hear about the behind the scenes. Can you describe your senses on that play? What do you see? The, the, the noise. I think what people don't understand is how loud it actually, the louder it gets, the quieter it gets in a weird way. Yes. At least in my experience. Yes. What's your senses on that play? Uh -huh. You get uh, the snap and, you're, and you, you see the Ohio State defense. So here's the, here's the thing. It's, it's, all, it's all a bluff. It was all a bluff. All three of the guys that's in the backfield for me was supposed to be blocking for me. <laughs> so we all just shuffle, shuffle, just to get the, t the defense to stop a little bit. And so once I get on the edge, they give my, give, my, give my guys time to get to them to block them. And so that's all I needed. I said, I'm going to shuffle, shuffle, get those guys, get, get in front of them, have the defense be patient, because they think I'm going to go for a dive. But really, we run the outside. And so I shuffle with the running back, and the other two guys lead me, lead me up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's over. I, once I see in daylight, there was only one or two guys, I'm like, I'm, I'm taking it. Yeah. I'm taking it. And that ton of visits is really, really real. When, you, when you're talking about, like, the noise just kind of quiet out, yeah. that's what happens, man. Yeah. You, you don't, like, people always ask me, like, do you hear, like, how do you feel in the big house? I was like, I don't hear the crowd at all. Mm -hmm. I'm locked in, and I mean, I feel like I'm just locked in with what, what we got going on. I can only hear my guys going. Yeah. That's it. My nickname been Shoelace since I was five years old. Yeah. So it's like everybody. So tell, tell us, tell us though, because I, I know you've told this story <laughs> uh -huh. probably a million times. Yeah. yeah. What, what happened? So 
at five years old, so my son right now is struggling to tie his shoes. So I don't, I, I don't feel bad now, but before, like I was five years old, all my teammates, they learned how to tie their shoes, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to learn too, but I can't tie them. I'm not good at it. And so my coach was like, all right, dude, let me tie your shoes. Let me double knot it. All right, come on, because you're like one of our best players. Like, come on, I'm going to double knot it. He double knot not a shoe. I go run a touchdown. I come back, both of my shoes untied. He's like, all right, just play like that. Because I had been playing like that the whole time. You scored with them being untied anyway, so. Go play. Yeah. And so everybody thought it was a myth, but it's like, we got pictures from when I was in high school, Little League, and my shoes was always untied. So I, I feel like I got to ask this, and uh, I'm, I'm just having fun. Okay. You do me. know how to tie your shoes, right? And like, so you can help your So you that's what everybody guys. asks me. Everybody <laughs> asks me. That. It's, it's funny that everybody asks me that because. Everybody asks me that, even even to this day. But I tie my son's shoe all the time. Okay, all right, all right. I'm teaching him how to tie his shoes. But he said, no, I want to be the shoelace. That's what he said to me. Okay. He want to be shoelace now. So, like, it's hard. It's hard. But then he say. needs to score some touchdowns. Like, that's the next part, right? And, like, and that's what I need to tell him, right? Now. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. So, it's like one of those situations where I'm like, I, how can I tell him to tie his shoes if I don't tie my shoes? Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, all right, his mom don't want him to tie. He, she want him to tie his shoes. So, I'm like, all right. But when he goes to school, he says he's always on time to race people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we have similar stories in the sense of, I heard you talk about when you committed to Michigan, where the program was at. Mm -hmm. And then we were talking a little bit about the 11-2 and two Sugar Bowl season. Mm -hmm. So you also kind of hinted at this where you said, hey, I, I just decided I'm not going to lose. Can you talk about the, the lessons and the value maybe of those darker years initially? and how that served you on the path to getting 11 and two. Michigan hadn't felt that kind of success and joy in a long time as a program. And, right. and that was one of the, the key peaks. I committed that year. I committed that year. Really? Watching, I said, Michigan's back. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. okay, I'm gonna tell you what happened with me. Uh, my freshman year, we did, not make a, uh, we, did not, we did not make a bowl game at all. So my freshman year, we was at home. That is so beyond reality <laughs> for Michigan, right? Yes. So beyond reality. So, like, man, when I, when, I, when I went back home and I'm looking at all my friends playing bowl games, they're playing, they compete in the national championship, and I'm like, I don't never want to be home around bowl season. And so, like, that was my mindset. So the next year, I came back for spring ball. Wanting everything. Like, I was like, I didn't start as a freshman. So, I came back. I was like, my dad, my dad sat down and had a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. He said, you got to start looking at, look at yourself in the mirror and tell mm -hmm. me you've been the best best you that you could possibly be. Because wow. if you've been the best you you could possibly be, you should be starting. What was your answer to that question? Was it, I'm sure you you, you were working hard, right? Yeah. 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 But there's that extra. And see, that's and that's the little things that I tell people now. Like, to this day, I tell some of my guys. I say, man, look, I always thought I knew everything because I was a great athlete. I could go out there and just run around and throw the ball to anybody, get open, do yeah. all these things, right? So then I realized I need to learn the playbook. I need to learn the, the defense. I can't just only learn the, learn our playbook. I need to learn what the defense is going to do, what they're going to throw at us, what's the pre-snaps pre read, and what's the snap read. Like, mm -hmm. what happened after the, after the ball is snapped? Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that I needed to learn that, I think Nick shared it all the time for this, man. Yeah. Nick shared it, took his time, and taught me how to read defense. Yeah. I so think Nick about shared it. Thank you. I appreciate you. He had watched him right now, but I always keep up with him just because of that reason. Man. We'll he send, always we'll send it to you. We'll send it to you, Nick. <laughs> I think about a good chess player, and, and, and uh, you know, chess has kind of taken off a little bit, but a good chess player, they're not thinking about their move. They're thinking about the response to their move. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about what the opponent is doing. And then what's then is the best move to exploit their weaknesses, right. to exploit their t attack even. Mm -hmm. And a good quarterback, as, as you're kind of alluding to right here, you, 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 man, you're, you have all the talent in the world. Mm -hmm. You could take it to the house at any point in time. They call you shoelace, right? Mm -hmm. But you needed to know what the defense was trying to accomplish to realize your full potential. Where's the, where are they vulnerable? Right, right. So I love, I love being in trip, trips right, trips left. That was my thing. Get them in trips. You know what they're gonna give you on defense, cause not a lot of not a lot of teams in college football give you so many mixes. And so when I when we when we found out like what we we knew what they would get in certain certain formations, so we had to go doubles. We knew what we were gonna get. We knew they was gonna run cover four. I'm like, all right, we know what they're gonna get every time we, we're in that spot. So like if they ran cover four 80 percent of the time when we ran doubles. So now I'm like, yes, I know what I'm getting every time. And doubles. Mm -hmm. Now, every now and then they will throw you something different, but then you'll be ready for it. But majority of the time, if they run it at 80% of the time, I'm good. I know what's going on. Know where I need to go with the ball. 
and the game all of a sudden slows down. Yes. Too. Yeah, I can't, I can't stress that enough is there is just a whole mental aspect of football where when you're young, because you don't know the defense, you don't know the details. When you're young, you're kind of barely, you're treading water. You feel like you're drowning <laughs> yes. in a sense, right? Yes. Because everything's happening fast and you can't answer why. Uh -huh. Why are they doing this? Why am I reacting? All of a sudden you start to learn and the game slows down. And you can see from a safety's alignment mm -hmm. and the corners pressed into the boundary. Right. Oh, they're bringing a corner blitz. Yes. Here, I'm going to check my protection, then I'm gashing them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Like you can see if a D end is on the ball, then an outside linebacker's walked on the line of scrimmage. Well, they're not going to go to the same gap. That means the whole D line's yep. moving. Mm -hmm. Now you can gash them. Mm -hmm. So the game starts to slow down. Yes. How about, but as a quarterback, it can't just be on you to know that. Right. From a leadership standpoint. So you were challenged that offseason by, you said it was your dad, uh -huh. to be the best you. Uh -huh. So first off, you lead by example to be the best you. How did you get the rest of the team to buy in? Or were they bought in already? I think it was all kind of like, it was almost like a disappointed season. It was one of the ones that you couldn't blame anybody but yourself. You know, we had a lot of games that was close, a lot of games that shouldn't have been. Like, if we got beat by more than 14, it was, it was one of those games. Like, you know, but you felt like, okay, we should have beat this team. You know, so I try to tell people all the time, like, it's different, right? And uh, so when we came back, a lot of guys was on grind all the time. And I mean, David Moat was one of the guys that was there. Mike Martin was one of the guys. I was one of the guys. Uh, Ryan Van Bergen was one of the guys that had us, like, ready to go. And so when we, when, we, when we thought about it, when we kept talking to each other, it's like we got to do everything to be right. So my, my thing was this. I wasn't a starter last year. So what am I going to do to be on the field? So I'm going to be here early. Mm. I'm going to work out extra. I'm going to be on the film, film study extra. You know, so what made you, what made you, what made you take that step to be that guy? I remember my first spring, um, I, I graduated high school early. Mm -hmm. So I remember my first spring, I, I, you really don't know. Sometimes it's a good thing to not know because yes. you just got to go trust it. Right. So I knew a couple things. I was skinny, I was slow, and I was weak. Mm -hmm. And I knew what that meant. I had to gain respect in some way. Yeah. So any agility and conditioning drill, I was going 100%. Right. I didn't care that I was the freshman that was trying hard. Mm -hmm. Man, freshman, why are you trying hard, dude? Like, take, take a rep off. This is just warm up. Like, mm -hmm. no, I'm going as hard as possible. So I thought that gave me a chance. That first spring ball, I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> really? Frank Clark, Frank Clark. Oh, that's a beast, man. The, the Oklahoma drill. Literally, I remember him, I was, both my feet were off the ground and he launched me back like wow. a rocket five, six yards. And I'm like, I called my dad and I said, Dad, I, I, I was behind freshman All-American Devin Funches. Mm -hmm. AJ Williams had started the whole season. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, how, if we have two now sophomores that started their whole freshman year, when am I gonna play? Mm. It's like, I'm skinny, I'm getting my ass handed to me. I called my dad, I said, Dad, I, I think I got a transfer. And he's like, calm down, like, what do you need to do? He's like, you need to get stronger. Okay, lift more, you need to get, you need to put on weight. Okay, you need to eat more. Mm -hmm. So I just, I made that decision at that point in time that I needed to fight, right? Like there's that fork in the road where you can throw in the towel mm. or you can fight. And the, 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 you, you fight and then you get a little success and you say, oh wait, this is working. <laughs> and you, it's like a mental muscle that you rep. Mm -hmm. And eventually that Notre Dame game, my, my second, second game of the season was my big opportunity. Funch got cramps, AJ sprained his ankle, I get tossed in there, I played a great game, we won, and I, I, again, a fork in the road, I said, okay, I wanna be a part Morning. of that, yeah. I wanna be a part of that. And I had, my dad had the same thing, my dad had, in his own words, the same conversation that you had. Mm -hmm. Hey, are you being the best you, are you doing every single thing possible? Mm -hmm. From that question, the, the whole world opens up. Cause yes. you can say, hey, actually things have been going all right, mm -hmm. but there's a lot more I can do. Dude, yes. And again, you work it and it builds and it's circular and you build that momentum and you start to have success. But the problem for me, we went seven and six, five and seven. Mm. We were struggling as a team. Mm -hmm. And I just think about here, Michigan, the state, part of why I fell in love with this place was the history of winning. Michigan mm -hmm. this, this year, well, they'll be the first team to ever have a thousand wins in college football, right? Yes. That's a hundred plus years yes. of rich tradition and winning. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter anything you do if the team isn't winning. When did you know, you know, you think about that Sugar Bowl season, when did you know that that season was gonna be special? When did you know it was gonna be different? Here's the, here's the crazy part, and everybody gonna say I'm crazy for saying this. We had a team meeting. 
before we even knew who the coach was. Nobody knew who the coach was going to be. Nobody knew it was going to be Brady. We had a team meeting. When is this? December, January? De December. Rich Rodriguez, I got fired. Yep. And uh, we had just got back. It was in January. And so Rich Rodriguez had just got fired. And uh, we, we, hold, we, held, we held a, a team meeting, the players. We said, we don't care who walked through that door. We're going to win. Mm. We're going to win. Like, and that was, that was, that was the conversation. Mm. And I was like, I'm not leaving. Moke said he wasn't leaving. Moke said, we're going to win. Mike Martin said, we're going to win. Ryan Van Bergen said, we're going to win. And, and Junior Henry, we're going to win. And like those dudes stood on it. Mm. Troy, Troy Wilford, we're going to win. And all those dudes, everybody looked at each other in the eyes. And it was, it was like one of those commitments. Like we locked in no matter who walked through the door. Mm -hmm. And like when I tell you, we worked out hard, hard. Like we, was guys, we had guys working out twice a day, every day. Like just to, because we didn't want to be, we didn't want to be that team that, that, that yeah. won just six games or won five games. It was like, no, we want to be. The standard is 10 games or better. That was that was our standard. It was like either 10, 10 games or better. And yeah. that, was, that, was our, that was our that was our goal that year. There's so much power in making that choice. I, I think that gets lost sometimes. And it's it's great to see the program now because of the leadership and the culture, but there there's a choice. You choose to be the best version of you on a given day. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't wait till you feel good, till everything's great. It's a choice to say, no matter what's going on externally, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to work. Right. Like, I refuse to lose. Right. And what you basically just described and what I heard was culture. And, mm -hmm. and it's a word that gets tossed around in football all the time, culture. What is culture? Mm -hmm. Well, good culture is <laughs> if someone is doing habits that are leading you closer to losses than wins. If you have someone that's half-assing, that's BSing, that's sleeping in meetings, culture is that gets self-corrected right away because that person stands out. Oh yeah. Because everyone in the locker room and the coaching staff is so aligned with what it takes to win. Mm -hmm. Culture is when you're not aligned with winning, you stand out, you get out. out. Yep. And then everyone's going in the same direction. Yes. The funny thing is, is it was a little success and then it trickles off. Mm -hmm. And then I, I'm, I'm sitting there and, and where you guys had started, I'm, I'm at the tail end of it, seven and six, five and seven. Then in comes Jim Harbaugh. Mm -hmm. They said a little success, back-to-back -back 10 win seasons, still meat on the bone. Mm -hmm. The choice was made, that doesn't guarantee you anything. You know, we, in 2016, we worked so, so hard. Mm -hmm. It doesn't guarantee you anything. Nope. And then the team starts to go a little bit until bang, back in 2021. Oh, I remember hearing the stories of, of Hutch. I remember hearing the stories of Hassan and, and the veterans, of them making that exact choice. Mm -hmm. When did you rejoin the program? Uh, last year. Last so year. Last year was my first year of being back. 2022. Uh, 2022. So, but, I, but I've always been a part of the program. Yeah. Every Saturday, I'm in front of that screen, man, watching Michigan. I mean, when you was there, I'm screaming for Jake. Like, let's go, let's go! I'm screaming. I'm going crazy about it. I'm like, let's go! And so, like, like you don't understand, like that tradition when when Tom Brady said you plan for the guys before you, it's real. Like people don't understand that. I don't think people understand like how much we all watch and like want to be a part of what's going on right now. Yeah. You know, and I feel like it's not just about us. I mean, and everybody like you. I play the league. You play the league. And I'm pretty sure it's different for you cheering for Michigan than you cheer for Denver. Yeah, you're 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 standing on the shoulders of great men before you. Mm -hmm. Like it, you you're wearing the the winged helmet, the mm -hmm. Jordan, the maize and blue. Right. The the pride in there's a price to be paid in order to be to wear it with pride. Yes. There's a sacrifice that has to happen to yes. wear these things with pride. Yes. Why was it important for you to come and join the program again? Man, when I got the opportunity, coach called me, and I was just like, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm nervous about coming back. But I was like, man, what other place would I rather be at? My son love it. I love it. Like, my family love it. Like, it's all about us. And the culture is, like, it's built in us. It's ingrained in us now. Like, coming here was the best thing I've best decision I've ever made. Wow. Wow. My dad, before he passed, told me, he was like, go back to Michigan. Wow. He was like, that's the place you, that's your home. That's your second home. Go back to Michigan. And I was like. I had other job offers from other places. And I was like, he was like, I was like, but the numbers, daddy? And he was like, no, go back to Michigan. And that's exactly what I did. I was like, I'm going back to Michigan. What, uh, when you think about your dad then, what, what, what was 
it about you guys' relationship that was so special? Because I just, I, what mm -hmm. I'm hearing is a, a deep, loving relationship oh, yeah. with your dad. I'm hearing a man that challenged you and wanted you to be the best. You know, what was so special about your dad? Oh, he did, he did, because he, he, he challenged you on everything you do. He gonna test you about everything. He gonna test you about everything. He gonna make sure, like, okay, you make sure you sweep all the corners. You, you, ain't, gonna, you ain't gonna cut corners at all here. You know, mm -hmm. that, I think that was his biggest thing about cutting corners. Like, you're not cutting any corners right yeah. here. And so, like, he always he always put that in me. And, like, to, to the day he left, he, he always put that in me, instilled that in me. Like, no, do what's right. Do what you feel is comfortable. Do what, follow your first mind. Yeah. And if you feel it's right, go ahead, take it. And always be able to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, okay, are you living right? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing to be the best you? You now being in the program on the other side, mm -hmm. a chance to make an impact on the players. Yes. You did it as a player. You had great mentors. You've, you've touched on them. Your dad being one. Mm -hmm. what, what type of leadership role and involvement do you have with, say, JJ, for example? How often are guys coming to lean on you for your expertise and your experience? Uh, a lot. Some of, the, some of the young guys come to me. Uh, you got, you got some, of the, some of the vet guys come to me. They ask me, like, what you see? How you see, how you see it on the field? I'm like, man, look. Relax and calm down. You got it. You, you, you've been playing ball your whole life. And I think that's something that sometimes you need to hear it again from somebody that, yeah. that had the spirits. Like, calm down. You've been playing this they game your whole life. They need to hear it life. from you. you, you, you and guys like you. Yeah. Like, say, for instance, if, if Costa came up to you. Yep. Hey, man, how, how, how you feel that on, that, on, the, on cover three? Did you, did you feel like you should have took the middle? Did you feel like you should have took the corner? Like, some of, some of that stuff like that. But if they come up to you and, they, and you say it with confidence and, and you calm with it, they gonna be like, yeah, he right. Like, let me let me just calm down and just make these plays. Like, yeah. I, I've been doing this my whole life. You're a playmaker. If, if you had the University of Michigan, you're a playmaker. Yeah. So go be a playmaker while you're here. How about with the with the NIL? And I just think about all the distraction <laughs> these guys have. And you were on the face. You're the cover of NCAA football. Uh huh. You were. I mean, sport. Were you Sports Illustrated? Were you? Yeah, I was. Sports I mean, Illustrated there you time. were everywhere right. at, at that point in time in your right. career before any of this. Uh -huh. What's your advice to them these days? Man. And how how to deal with the outside distractions? See, that's one thing about me. I, I never look at social media, and I, I tell I tell these guys all the time: don't worry about it, the people that that, t that tell you like talk down on you. Worry about the people that care about you and love you, because you gonna do if you do it for the people that love you and care for you, you gonna do it with more passion. But if mm -hmm. you do it for the people that hate you or or talk down talk down on you, then it's gonna be like, oh, I'm just doing. Oh, now I'm laughing at this guy. But what what are you proving? Are you proving? Are you trying to be great? Are you just trying to be, prove, prove your haters that you're good? You have to be able to answer the question of why you're doing something. Yes. And it has to be something bigger than yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Then I'm, I'm curious, man, because this has been a great conversation getting to know you on this, on this deeper level. What is your why? God, my kids, my family. That's, 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 that's it, man. Like that, that's what made me go, man. That's what made me tick. How I was raised, how I was born, and the people that look at that after me now, man. My nieces and nephews, my neighborhood. Like, I, like today, I got so many text messages from my 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 neighborhood. Like, my hood just just texts me all day to day, and was just like, man, we look up to you. You're an inspiration to us. Wow. And so, like, just hearing that and seeing that, it's like, all right, I got to keep going. I got to pile up and keep doing, strive for for greatness. Yeah. It's almost like how you look at LeBron. Everybody like, like, why is LeBron still playing? Because <laughs> he's striving for greatness. Yeah. That's his. That's his thing. Strive for greatness. His why is so big. Yes. If it was just to, you know, make money, he would have retired a decade ago. Why if not? he wanted to be one of the all-time greats, he's already one of the all-time greats. Yes. But his why is something that it, it's it's a foundation of rock. Mm -hmm. Like it, it can't be blown away, right? No. Like, yeah. Um I think I want to ask you some fun questions about what you, going back to your time as a student All athlete. Right, I gotta cut you off. What's your why? My why, I have a relationship with my dad just, just the way that you do. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at my dad. My dad's one of eight from a small town in Ohio. My mm -hmm. mom's one of 16. And as a, as a kid, I just observe, mm -hmm. right? I just observe. And I, I look at, you know, when my family needed something, how my dad would be the leader to help out. How it, I never heard him say he was tired. I never heard him say I can't. It was always I can. He ran to the to the challenge. He ran to the problem and mm -hmm. helped people. And I, I made a decision there. I'm engaged. Um, you know, I hope to have a family of my own one day. I know you said you got your own family, yes. right? Yes. So my why is that exact thing is to be a leader. I, I think about 
you know, how do you, how do you make an impact on the world? Mm -hmm. One man or woman needs to influence at least two. Mm -hmm. And those ones should influence too. Mm -hmm. And that's exponential growth. So my why is to make that impact on people. Hopefully it's beyond two. Hopefully it's tens and hundreds and thousands. That would be the ultimate goal really is to make that impact that has a ripple effect of goodness throughout the world. Right. Just leave the place a little bit better than you found it. Yes, you know, sir. I think about my, I told, I had a conversation with my dad the other day and I was like, because as a kid, you want perfection from your parents, right? Yes. You judge them and you're just so ignorant. To, <laughs> they're doing their best job, right? Yes. So I, I told my dad, I said, Dad, I know you did the absolute best with what you had. Now I got to raise the bar right, a little yes. bit. And I'm going to fall short of perfection. Uh -huh. But I want my kids one day to know that I did the absolute best and hold me to that standard. Then I want them to raise the bar. It's that cycle going on, you yes. know? Yes. I tell people all the time, man, when you're young, you look at your parents, you think they like know everything. And then you start seeing their flaws and you start seeing it, it's like, okay. Now when you have kids, you're like, okay, I can see why my parents have flaws. I can see it. But like my son, he don't see my flaws. He think I'm just, I'm a superhero to him. Like to this day, he, he feel like that's what I am. But like, I want to make sure he sees that I have flaws, but I'm going to do my best to make sure you see that. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna try to be my best. And I'm gonna try to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But you gonna have to be perfect more than I am. Yeah. You know, you gotta you gotta pass on that torch. What I think about, what I love about Michigan, and <clears throat> and I know we're not alone in this, but I do take a sense of pride in the sense. What I love about this place is the character of the student athletes, the character yes. of the alum. And you know, I could talk to you for a few hours here, but unfortunately, we gotta we gotta wrap this one up. Right. I just it, it's it's great to talk to you and get to know you on this level. I think we're lucky to have you in the building. I think we're lucky to have the student athletes in the way they represent the university and the Block M. But um, certainly, man, you've left this place better than you found it. You've left me better than you found oh, me, man. man. A good impact about, on man. me. So I appreciate the time, man. It's, it's been a pleasure to me, talking man. to you, bro. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you, man. Excited to have some yeah. more conversations oh, yeah, in the definitely, future, bro, definitely. for sure. For what, was sure. The, what was the fun conversation you wanted to have? What was that? I just wanted to know what, what it was like to walk to class on Monday when you're Denard Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> well, my sophomore year, we couldn't walk to class. They, they stopped me from going to class. Okay. Oh, <laughs> all right. All right. So, all right. Can we get a little, little <laughs> quick quick uh, cliff note on what, what what that conversation was like? I mean, when the, when the professor come up to you and say, hey, you can't come back to class, you you interrupted my class. Usually like, it's guys <laughs> trying to get out of class. Right. You No, that's not you. No, that's not no, you. No, no. Because, you know, Steve, was Steve here checking Steve classes? Steve was here. Steve, Steve was, was checking here. classes. Yeah. And you had to be there on time. Yeah. And so I would be checking, they would be checking my class, and I will go in there, and kids would be like, hey, do not can you sign this? Can you take a picture with me? And the professor was like, hey, you, you, you messed up my lecture. Yeah. I'm going to have to need you to. It's not good for anybody. Yes. You, yeah. can, come to, you can come to, uh, what is it called? Uh, St uh, uh, is it? Office hours. Office hours. Office hours. hours. You, yeah. come to office hours. Yeah. you can come yeah. to office hours, but you can't come to class. Yeah. And I was like, what? And so I had to come down and talk to the guys <laughs> at the academic center. Like, hey, they tell me I can't go to class. And they thought I was joking. And they found out. It was like, oh, no, it's serious. Yeah. And so once that happened, hey, there's no excuses. I know we got TikTok. Some of the guys, maybe your TikTok, man. There's no excuses. That that's real, okay? That is real, right no there. No excuses so, at yeah. all. Like we had to be there. You know, Michigan time. You get ten minutes after, but yeah. No, they was like, you know, you can't go to class. So my sophomore year, I, I was, I was here. And you got your degree. Yeah, I got my degree. Got your degree. Yes, that's the only thing I Came back, and uh, like I said, man, we're lucky to have you, bro. Yes, sir. So, uh, it's been a pleasure, brother. It's been a pleasure, man. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Hopefully we're bringing some more conversations. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Definitely, definitely. Hopefully we can do this again soon. Oh yeah, we so. got we got way more conversation, man. Because I definitely want to pick your brain a little bit more. Hey, <laughs> please, uh, please comment. Please reach out. Uh, I know Denard said he's not as active on social media. I am, but give us some feedback on this conversation. Seriously, this is the coolest part about Michigan is is the character. It's the off field stuff. Um, the man behind the mask, as I would call it, yes, right? Yes. To get to know the, the the human being behind the football player. I think your your love for the football players, the team, the athletic department will just grow even further because there's some special, special people here. So thanks for tuning in.